The England captain is now an Arsenal player, and he has had his say on the Benjamin White situation. Meanwhile, we've got a new transfer link to talk about and some injury updates ahead of the game against Manchester City. This is the Arsenal News Show. Hello and welcome to the Gouda Talk. Back again with you guys for another episode of what is the Arsenal News Show. Joining you every single morning at 8am UK time. I tell you what, this chat box have no chill. None. I'm like, it's 8.01. 8.01. And I'm getting battered for being late. Look, I get it. I get it sometimes. Sometimes I can be two, three, four, even five minutes late. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. But one minute? One? You're not giving me one? It's not acceptable. It's unacceptable. It's terrible behaviour. There's just no leniency at all. I do this every morning. I put this on every single day and I'm being scrutinised over a minute. Not cool. Not cool at all. Uh, Blackshine, good morning to you, to Tabani, to Glenn, to Josh. Good morning to Kaiser and Stevie, Shari, Martin, other Martin, Damien, um, Temi, Pam, Paul, Lee, Arasilki, NSW, Rich, James, SNR. Uh, Gavin, Matt G, uh, good morning to all of you guys and girls. Thank you so much, as always, for tuning in. Hugely appreciated. I hope you've had a fantastic start to your weeks. It's Tuesday. Don't worry. We are going to get through it together. It's going to be over quickly. And then it's Wednesday. And you can almost see Friday. We're going to be, we're going to do it together. So don't you, don't you worry. Uh, Leon, indeed, 1K like for every minute. Tommy's late. <laughs> Is that how this is going to work? I mean, if that's the case, I might as well just wait an hour. Um, <laughs> and in that way, get 60,000 likes on the video. Please do, if you haven't done so already, do drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Chips and P says, 801, I thought this was Harry Simu's show. <laughs> Leave Harry alone. Harry, Harry knows what he's doing. I, I reckon he does it on purpose. I'm certain he does it on purpose. He's just like, what's the build up that tension? Um, wants to show off his, his new cap, whatever his new cap he's bought this week. Um, good morning to those joining us. Thank you. NSW, the laptop is plugged in already. Thank you for the reminder, but I plugged it in. I remember to do that. And that's why I was a minute late because I was plugging in my laptop. Um, and Louis, who's been a member for 17 months, says hashtag 1K every fogging day. Uh, make sure you get that pronounced, pronounced, pronounced. How can you mess up the word pronounced correctly? Otherwise, Monetization's out the window. Um, <laughs> I said that the other day on a show, and so I left a comment like, I was listening to this with my family, and you used a bad word. I'm like, no, it's like saying freaking. It's just, just different. It's just a different word to represent the word that we, we don't want to use. Um, right, let's jump into today's stories before we start losing our heads anymore, shall we? Uh, we start uh, with Carl Walker, um, of course, who came off in England's game against Brazil, and there was us naively, perhaps stupidly, hoping that uh, this might mean that he would miss Man City's game against Arsenal at the weekend. But Sky have suggested that this is not this is not a serious injury. It's not a problem. Um, and uh, it's, it, he could indeed be back for the game against Arsenal. Shock! Shock ripples through the footballing world, doesn't it, when we find out a Manchester City injury is not as bad as what was first thought. So, uh, you yeah, know, <laughs> that's the reality. This is the world that we live in. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Didier Deschamps has been talking about Saliba, who will be starting for France in tonight's game. It's worth pointing out that uh, uh, Saliba didn't, I don't believe, started their last game, but... I think we can understand the reason as to why, um, because he says this. He is having a good season, but he is also doing things that I don't like so much. For France, he has limited game time, but when he plays, that hasn't necessarily gone well. The hierarchy doesn't favour him at the moment, but he is here. De Opamecano has had game time and perhaps William has had less. With certain players, I make sure to preserve because it can be confidence or little blockages that can shift. Some don't have any concerns. Some need game time. William has had less game time, so that doesn't allow him to be very calm. And that's a lot of words and not much said other than the fact that I don't get this. I I, I, I don't want to throw out accusations. You know, I don't want to point fingers. But these just sound like the words of someone who's not just just not a fan. 
You know, rather than there being like a tactical reason as to why, I just get that sense, you know, just getting that feeling that I just don't think the Shomps is a fan of Saliba, which is fine. You know, I have absolutely no issue with that. The issue I have got is Upper Meccano has been pretty darn awful this season for Bayern Munich. You know, we're talking about back-to-back -back red cards. We're talking about making key mistakes in big games. I'm not sure that I'm just, yeah, I'm getting a bit of a feeling. And as Anna says in the chat here, his loss, you know, absolutely his loss. We'd rather you didn't use Saliba. Keep him out of the lineup. Keep him out your team. We don't want play. We don't want you playing him. If you don't want to like him, that's your that's you know your prerogative. I don't care. Uh, just keep him out the France team as much as feasible possible. That said, he will be starting tonight for France in their game. So let's keep those fingers crossed that uh, that he'll be fine in the end. Meanwhile, Declan Rice has been named England captain. A massive congratulations to Declan Rice. He will take the armbands tonight. Of course, Harry Kane is usually uh, the England captain. I'm not sure who wore it actually on. On uh, Saturday, was it was it Carl Walker? Uh, I'm assuming it was potentially Carl Walker that wore the armband um, on Saturday. Um, but uh, Declan Rice will be the man. Maybe it was Maguire actually. Uh, Declan Rice will be the man wearing the armband um, tonight for England's game against Belgium. He starts for the second game in a row. <sighs> it's yeah. It's it's almost like they don't care anymore. Like you've got Manu on the bench, give him some minutes. You've got, I mean, Madison deserves a chance to play. Uh, kind of Gallagher, of course, is still there. I don't know. He started the other game, but do we really? I mean, you brought in Rico Lewis, who can play in midfield as well. Do we have to keep starting Declan Rice, please? Do we need to do that? And because he's captain, the most likely scenario is that he probably will play the old game again. So. Yeah, another two starts for Declan Rice and another game. Thankfully, I mean, I was there at the game on Saturday and he didn't, it didn't strike me necessarily as a two, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I, He didn't strike me as a two, uh, what's the, an energy expending game for Rice. Let's put it that way. It didn't really strike me as that. So, uh, yeah, I, maybe I should be calmer about this and maybe he can manage his, himself better than I'm giving him credit for, but oh, goodness me. Does this mean that Arsenal will get some of the England captain perks that Tottenham got all those years? I don't know, but uh, certainly Declan Rice getting down the England captain is not a bad thing, necessarily. Uh, and anyway, our headline story surrounding transfers today is on Usmana Dem uh, Diamande. Sorry, the uh, I kept calling him Usmana Di Dembele yesterday because I was doing stories on the French team and then I was talking about Diamande as well but Osmana Diamande the Ivory Coast international and sporting defender has been linked to both Arsenal and Chelsea Chelsea was said to have had negotiations on a deal upwards of 60 million well it's now said according to the record in Portugal that Arsenal also have joined negotiations for the defender very good player really well liked of all the defenders that are out there at the moment he certainly for me was in my dream list of potential players that Arsenal could sign. And uh, of all the kind of big investments that you'd make on a defender, I think Diamande is probably potentially worth it for the quality and the versatility that he brings. We want a versatile defender. While he's played the majority of games at centre-half, he's definitely got that style. He's definitely got that technical ability to be somewhat versatile. He's played in, I think he's played a couple of games at defensive midfield, uh, if my memory serves. I have no doubt he could probably play in a, a right-back position in this type of right-back role if it, it was asked of him as well. So, Osmano Diamande, one to keep an eye on. Could be a key defensive target for the club this summer. We'll keep you updated with that because I mean as I say he's got some real solid quality and if you'd like some solid quality in your safety and security while surfing the net you can get that of course with the one the only Nord VPN which gives you the superpower to change your geolocation on your laptop your phone or your tablet you can hop over to anywhere else in the world uh, within their list of territories that they cover and with our special code, you can get yourself a significant discount off a one or two year plan and have some free months thrown in as well. So you go to nordvpn.com slash guna, you select your one year plan and you find out you've got three extra months thrown in. Or maybe you select your two year plan with a couple of bit, with a bit of discount on top of that and you get four months extra thrown in. Who can say any fairer than that? Well, I can, because if you're not happy with the service for whatever reason, you can get a 30 day money back guarantee as well. So. I cannot recommend this more highly for those of you that need to make sure that you're safe and secure online so that you can keep people peeking at what you're doing uh, on the net. You don't want that. 
So use Norn to protect yourself and others. Not only that, but of course, as I checked this morning, there are only five tickets. There may be less now. This is the last day. The last time I will talk about this prize to you. We'll be talking about a different prize tomorrow. The last time I'm mentioning it, there is five tickets the last time I checked. And uh, you uh, you certainly need to, uh, in my opinion, get on this one because you don't want to miss out on it. And there's lots of instant win prizes that may or may not have got. Um, but still, there may be some tickets left. Best of luck. UK only, of course, as always. Link down in the description. Right, let's go to part two and your questions right after this. Okay, shall we jump into the chat box? First of all, a big happy birthday to Mr. Mikel Arteta, who turns, I think, 42 today. Um, big happy birthday to him. Hope that he's enjoying it and having a lovely time. Um, certainly deserves our well wishes uh, on his birthday today, which is great to see. I'm pretty sure he's 42. Pretty sure I'm right in saying that. You'll tell me, in, I'm sure, in the chat box if I am indeed wrong. Um you know, I don't think we need to go into any kind of detail about his his his, his merit, his uh, his uh, achievements so far. He's taken Arsenal in one direction, which is back to the top, back to competing with the elite teams, and we are very so grateful for that. And we are looking forward to hopefully securing some silverware in the very near future as well. Right, um, let's go to uh, Gaia. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that quite correctly. It could be Gia, Gia. But I'm going to go with Gaia. Gaia can tell me if I'm wrong. Um, uh, and Gaia says, uh, Tom, I had a chocolate cake. Uh, remember, guys, for listening, it is choc a lot. I'm not pronouncing it wrong. That's just what it's called. Chocolate. I had a chocolate cake from Nando's based on your recommendation. Wow. It was incredible. It's going to be my new go-to Nando's dessert. Cheers, mate. You are welcome, Gaia. Because as I have mentioned before, it is... The greatest chocolate cake I have ever had in a restaurant, period. You know, sometimes you get some very nice cakes made by some family members, and they're very, very nice. You can't get them in restaurants. But this, you wouldn't think of it. You would not think of it whatsoever, because it's obviously it's a chicken shop more than anything else. <laughs> I hope you didn't put the sack of spicy sauce on it. Doesn't go on that. Not very well. Bit of cream. Beautiful. Try it. That's what I'm saying. Nando's, if you're listening, if you want to sponsor, I will shout from the rooftops about your chocolate cake. Not a problem at all. Um, but <laughs> I'm so glad that you enjoyed it. Um, let's go to Darren says, AC Milan are trying to use Ibrahimovic to land Goyokarez, his idol, apparently. I'm not surprised. Use, you know, the use what you've got at your disposal. Indeed. Uh, Jordan says, has anyone tried the sack of sauce? I believe Harry has. I think Harry's been Nando's. Um, I've not. I went there on the day that it released and uh, I got uh, just to get a collect a lunch um, while I was working and uh, I couldn't take any. We don't do any sachets of it. You have to eat in the restaurant to have it. You can't buy it. And I was asking all the questions, so I wanted to try it. But yeah, you actually have to go in. And I was only going on my lunch break to try and grab a, a collection, but you can't have any of it, which, you know, you have to eat in, which is um, frustrating. So I want to try Saka's sauce. Um you know, a little chilly, but uh, yeah, I, I haven't been able to yet, which is very disappointing. And um, <laughs> knowledge says, "What is my go-to Nando's?" I do have different ones. I'm one of those rare beasts that doesn't have kind of their, you know, your standard every single time. I love a, I love a double chicken wrap, absolutely. I love a, um, I love getting the chicken thighs. I think they're great. And um, you know, I'm not averse to getting a half chicken sometimes. Usually medium, sometimes hot. It depends what kind of mood I'm in. Um, but uh, I'm very much looking forward to trying the sauce whenever I get it. Uh, and Anasimos says, wow, it's my birthday today as well. Well, happy birthday, Anasimos. Um, didn't I share, uh, di didn't know I shared it with the boss. All the more reason to support him and see him bring trophies and success to the club. Happy birthday to him. And of course, uh, to Anasimos. Please make sure you're welcome. Uh, not welcome. Anasimos has been with us for ages, but make sure you show him plenty of love in the chat. Um, Duncan says, speaking of Saka, are there any updates on him? Well, not really. Um, we're waiting for Mikel Arteta, of course, to face the press at the end of this week. He'll have a press conference Thursday, Friday. I haven't had that confirmed as of yet when it's going to be. Um, but when we hear from Mikel Arteta, we expect to hear about Saka. We expect to hear about Martinelli. Don't believe everything you read. 
Um, and we should expect to hear about um, who else? Uh, this Gabriel, of course, at centre half. Um, so we've got some updates to come um, on some players at the end of this week. Uh, Mr. Thugi says the Diamande link seems odd. I think getting a striker, centre mid, and winger should be more important. Just because there's a link to one player in one position, it doesn't mean that Arsenal won't and aren't trying to sign players in other positions as well. You know, it's worth pointing out that Arsenal will have intentions to sign players in lots of different positions just because we're being linked to a player in an area where maybe you think we don't need it. I certainly think we do. I think seven defenders is one short. I think you need eight competent defenders. We have seven at the moment. I think we need eight. Um, and Diamande would be an excellent addition to the group. So there is still intentions to sign players in those other areas, yes. Um, but uh, I think certainly that's that's the way forward. Um, Chris P says rice on white. Oh, did I not read it out? Did I not? Did I not read out the quote? Did I just talk about the England captaincy? I'm so sorry. Um, I thought I read it out. Apparently, I didn't. Um, sorry about that. Yes, I will. I will we'll talk about it right now, and I'll have to label it in part two. Wow, that's so unprofessional of me. Um, yes, yeah, so Declan Rice speaking and being asked in his press conference about Benjamin White said, when I get back to Arsenal, I can have a conversation with him and see the ins and outs and see what he thinks. I would love to, I love him to come back. I think Bakayo would. I think Aaron Ramsdale would. I think we'll all go into beyond him when we get back to say, hopefully he can change his mind. I would love him to be here playing against him and now playing with him, seeing how he is. He is very quiet. He keeps himself to himself. But when he's on the pitch, he'd do anything for his team to win. I think he's a really unique player because he can play three positions in tournaments. That's so key. He can play centre back. He can play right back. He can play inverted fullback. I love that he talks about that being two different positions. Uh, it's Ben's life. It's Ben's decision. Obviously, people are going to have opinions. People are going to write stuff about it. But ultimately, he's content with his decision. And I, I think this is a really, I think this is a captain's answer. You know, I think it, it went down every avenue. It covered every base. He talked about the fact that they were, yes, they would speak to him. And I think that's the right pathway. They should absolutely speak to him, get there, you know, find out from the man himself as to the reasons as to why, so they can have a better view on themselves to make an opinion on that choice. But also they should, be, you know, he absolutely understands at the same time that, um, that it's his decision and that he's making his choice and he's, happy to respect that so a very captain type response i think from declan rice indeed um clive says what do you mean don't believe everything you read about martinelli come on tom spill the beans no clive all i'm saying is look at the person who wrote it in the first instance and then see what they changed their Twitter picture to. That will tell you everything you need to know. Uh, Temis' his thoughts on Rice saying he wouldn't mind being captain if someone, if something was to happen to Erdegaard smells like sabotage to me. <laughs> I think he's just, you know, he'd happily be Arsenal captain, wouldn't he? He knows that he's a leader in the group. And if there forever is a reason that Erdegaard is not available for a game or Arteta wants to rotate Erdegaard out, of course, I think Rice is one of, would, would be one of the first picks for that. Um, so, yeah, I, I think there's, there's no sabotage involved. Uh, North Banguna says, isn't Declan Rice much more articulate as a captain than Harry Kane? He knows what to say. I, I you know, I, I, I rarely have listened to Harry Kane speak, if, him, if I'm very honest, uh, in press conferences. So, I don't have too much to compare it to, but uh, certainly Declan Rice speaks very well indeed. Uh, Matt G says, fans need to think about the transfer market like ordering at Nando's. You ask for your half chicken before asking for rice. It doesn't mean that the rice isn't as important as your half chicken. And it's a very important point, Matt G. Very much so indeed. Uh, Gage says, do you think our signings with uh, will come out of nowhere this summer, much like Havertz did last summer? For some reason, I feel like Arteta likes to keep his deals done under the radar. I mean, he does. Arsenal do. It's not just Arteta. Arsenal want to keep their deals done as much as they can under the radar. They don't like talking about it publicly. They don't like confirming anything until it's kind of really late stages. Um, so rarely you'll get any confirmation on that end. But what I would say is that you're right to say about the, the Havertz deal coming out of nowhere. It very much did because it was an opportunity signing. Arsenal, I don't think, ever planned months in advance to go for Kai Havertz because I don't think they thought he would be on the market. I think there was quite a bit of surprise that Chelsea were willing to sell Kai Havertz. And I think his performances this season are absolutely evidence as to the reasons behind clubs' surprise that Havertz was up for sale. And for that reason... Arsenal moved for him. They took the opportunity and they got the deal done in the end and it was great to see. Um, so, yeah, certainly very happy that it got done and I think we'll see potentially another type of surprise in the summer. 
Uh, Stefan says, can anyone recommend a bar in Bordeaux to watch an Arsenal match? I'm there for the Everton match and would love to go with some fellow Gooners. If you are a listener and you can help out Stefan, perhaps you've been to Bordeaux before, perhaps you're a listener in the area, please do help us out. If you've ever been there and know that there are good places to watch Arsenal in Bordeaux, send us a message, leave a comment down below. Um, and uh, get in touch and help Steph for now. Uh, Ali says, uh, what's your plan for the game on Sunday? Well, I am working the game, but I'm not travelling to Manchester. It's the first time I'm not actually going to the Etihads in the last season or so. The last couple of times we've been, I have gone and worked there. But this season, sadly, I'll be covering the game from home, which I'm fine about. There are some really big tra uh, travel issues on that day from the looks of things. So uh, maybe it's a blessing in disguise that I'll be covering the game from home. But it will be... Doing the blog, of course, uh, on football.london. You'll be able to keep up to date with everything that's going on. If you're unable to watch the game for whatever reason, make sure that you tune in to our football.london match day live blog. I run them for 99% of all of the games. So they're always live four hours before kickoff. Information on team news, information on the build up, information on the reasons why some players aren't starting or aren't playing, etc. So make sure you always tune in to our football.london live blog. And I do my minute by minute commentary over there. Um, and uh, after the game, I'll probably be basking in the glory of Arsenal being clear of Man City by four points. Yep. Uh, fingers crossed. <laughs> That's what I'll be doing. Um, and so there you go. That's my game plan for Sunday. Uh, Rob says, Nando sponsors the pod. Tom has to spend three hours per day in the gym uh, because of chocolate cake overload. <laughs> Can you imagine? Can you imagine? I might, you know, if anyone is, if anyone who listens, there's any links to Nando's, get in touch. Just get in touch, I say. Please do. Uh, Samson says, do you think the March Internationals should be scrapped? Already Walker is injured as a result of a pointless friendly. Um, yes. I think that there is absolutely no problem with attaching like a friendly or two before the international tournament starts. You have your preliminary squad. You play two friendlies before the tournament before the, the with your preliminary squad. You then shave down your squad to the, the 25 or whatever it needs to be for a tournament. And you go forward from there. I really don't understand why there needs to be a, fr a friendlies now. It makes no sense whatsoever. You, things can change between March and the tournament. Injuries can happen. Form can drop. And I think there's better if you can have a couple of friendlies right before the tournament to make some final decisions on players. Really strange. Very, very strange indeed that they put these friendlies here. And I think more needs to be done to try and change it. If anything, we should have a break, you know, just a week off, a weekend off of football, just to give players a bit of a rest going into the end of the season. That'd be much more preferred to this chaos. Um, Jack says, can Arteta win more trophies than Arsene Wenger? Can he? Of course, can. Anyone technically can. It's about will they is the, it's the bigger question. And at the moment, Jack, it's, I haven't got enough evidence to say yes, that he could, because we haven't seen him win more than the FA Cup and the couple of community shields that he's secured so far. I need to see more. There's certainly encouragement that maybe he could, Jack, but uh, certainly we've not seen enough evidence to turn around and say, yes, definitely he could. Um, but uh, we need to see more first. If he won the league this season, he won the Champions League this season, You'd be in a much stronger place to suggest that he certainly could. Uh, knowledge says, Touchwood, if we win a title this season, uh, will Arsenal be respected more from the media? I think, m I myself think not. I think maybe Arsenal would earn a bit more respect, certainly if they were to win the league, quite a bit more, in fact. So, yeah, I think that I think that they would. Uh, Gilbert says, Ramsdale, will he stay and fight for his position? I think he will probably go, would be my prediction. Uh, Tyza says, hi, Tom, can you think of any players who haven't been mentioned in the news linked to Arsenal who you think could be Arsenal? Uh, it could be good for Arsenal out there, like a Vieira type signing when he kind of signed surprisingly. Um, I mean, you're looking at centre forwards, you're looking at wide positions, centre midfield. I mean, Yusuf Fafana hasn't really been mentioned, to be honest. There hasn't really been any concrete links. And he's always the one that I look at and think anyone talking about him is kind of because people just like him rather than it being or coming from anywhere. Obviously, I've mentioned him a fair few times on this show. Uh, yeah, very tricky. Um, but I'd say Yusuf Afana potentially is is one. Beyond that, wide players? My knowledge of European football has certainly diminished as I've covered Arsenal more closely and you know made it more specific what football I watch. But yeah, I'm going to go with Hafana, mate, as my choice there. Uh, James says, uh, surprise TGT appearance at Chicago this year. I wish, mate. Sadly, I can't be there this year. I would have loved to have gone. I plan on 
who knows, maybe going next year uh, to Gunapalooza. If you are going, have an amazing time. If you're able to get to Chicago's uh, Globe Pub for the game against Wolves this season, they're putting on some great things. The tickets are available on the Chicago Gunas Twitter page. Um, I can't go for a number of reasons. One, I've got a engagement party on the Saturday for a friend of mine who is actually moving to Florida. And then on the Sunday, my other half, uh, my wife, uh, is running the London Marathon. Um, so I will be watching her um, with my fa- uh, with mine and her family um, uh, do the London Marathon. So sadly, no, I won't be in Chicago, but I have very good reasons as to why not. And of course, as I said before, you can um, support uh, my other half running the London Marathon. I have tweeted out a few times. I've raised it on the show. I will send a link to to you guys uh, closer to the time if you'd like to donate to her cause um, beforehand. But yeah, she'll be running the London Marathon that weekend. So um, yes, uh, I won't be in Chicago, but hopefully next year. We're very close to her target. We haven't quite reached the target yet. So uh, I'll, once I'll push it close to the time, hopefully we can uh, hopefully we can reach it. And if you, you are interested in donating, then just drop me a DM or a message on Discord and, and, or something and I'll send you the link. Um, North Banguna says, I don't care what the media think. They always hated the Wenger and George Graham teams, whether they were successful or not. Siege mentality is what Arsenal is all about. Mikel Arteta should embrace it. I have thought something very similar before, um, but that siege mentality of kind of the world, Arsenal against the world. Use it as momentum, use it as fuel, and hopefully it'll propel you towards something uh, to success. Carl says, any more TGT merchandise planned? I love wearing my hat, but I'm terrified of losing it. Um, just in case, because obviously we haven't produced some. Again, Carl, not yet. I'll put this, I'll say this out now. Anyone that is involved in like, uh, ideally, I'd, I don't want to do like, I don't want to go with a company that's like, you know, making them in, you know, far away places. I'd rather support like a local community thing. Um, if anyone is interested in or has links to anyone that would like to get involved, we are open. Uh, to doing a potential deal for merchandise and to promote and produce merchandise uh, for this. We do it non-profit. So any profits the, the, um, the channel would make, we, we donate. Um, So nothing, none of it goes to me. So if you're, if you're interested in that, uh, of course there is profit to be made on the manufacturing side of things. We would not be expecting it to be done uh, for nothing. And we have to support those local businesses, which is part of the scheme. So if you are involved, if you've got any contacts, Get involved, get in, get in touch. I'm, I'm more than happy uh, to be wanting to speak to you. Uh, John says, while Tom's out here eating chocolate cake, his wife is running marathons. <laughs> Indeed, that is the difference. That is the difference between us. Hey, I, I go to the gym now. I go to the gym a couple of times a week. You know, it's an improvement on no times a week, which was what it was previously. So, yeah. Um, sorry. Uh, that's the best I can do. Uh, Jack says, uh, I recently moved to London from Ireland. What is the best way to get my hand on an Arsenal ticket? It is so hard. Jack, if I had an Arsenal ticket for the number of times someone asked me, how do I get my hands on an Arsenal ticket? Um, yeah, uh, I, I, I wish, I wish I could help people more. Um, but the only thing I can say to people is, is get a membership, enter the ballot. If you're not successful in the ballot, Try your best to get one on the ticket exchange. That's the only way you're going to going to be able to get it. The, the, the demand is so high, you know. It's not like six, seven, eight years ago, or even four years ago, maybe even three years ago, when the the demand for tickets was incredibly, you know, was a lot smaller than that. Um, and so, therefore, it's it's very, very difficult to to not just face the reality that getting tickets is incredibly hard. Um, incredibly hard. Incredibly hard. Um, Paul says, uh, good morning, TGT Global Community. Uh, late up, so we'll watch on Catch Up soon. Like as well. Paul, make sure you catch up. Um, very much appreciate it. A1 says, Tom, we need some new TGT emoji. I know. I have promised people for so long um, new emojis, and I've just never got round to sorting it. It's I I really do. I promise. I remember promising like an Erdegaard emoji like a year ago, and it's not happened. Um, so yeah, sorry about that. Um, again, I can try my best. If you are a designer, <laughs> I feel like this has been a show full of me just asking for sponsors and and people to reach out about different things. Um, but uh, if you are a designer, you know, Louis says you know poorly drawn Arsenal. But to be fair, you know, Ask Blog. Is very much attached with 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 Jacob and his work, so I I think that that'd be you know the crossover 
there is uh it's it's been done you know um ask blog is is with poorly drawn so it's more you know if you fancy designing some uh you know designing some emojis for us you can see the ones that we use if you're a member in the chat box um as matt is matt g is showing you there um then get in touch and again i'd be more than happy to to potentially do some business with you um in designing some emojis i'm more than happy to pay for some work to be done to design us some emojis so yeah get in touch um send us a dm at the guna talk tv at tom canton media and uh, and we'll have a chat um martin says i preferred the good old days when you rocked up queued and paid on the gate i know martin but if that was the case in 2024 the emirates would be you know, swarms with people. You wouldn't be able to move. There'd be hundreds of thousands of people trying to get tickets on the day. Just, um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's just unlikely that that's ever ever going to happen. Um, Bingy says, uh, or Bingy, sorry, says Tom, have a break, have a Kit Kat, not a marathon. Yeah, I'll leave the marathon to the missus, mate. She can do that. She can do that. That's uh, that's absolutely fine. Uh, Eshan says, bit behind, uh, Louis. I see that you're a regular here. Where in New Zealand? I love this. Yeah, make sure you get in touch with each other about, you know, if you can watch, if you're based in countries where, you know, typically you haven't got too many contacts that are Arsenal, um, get in touch with each other. As I said before, we've got a Strava group. I know we've not done the Eat, Sleep, Arsenal repeat podcast in quite some time now. Um, scheduling mainly being the main reason and just not being able to get it done. Um, but we have our Strava group, um, which you can also get involved in. Um, so please, E-S-A-R-P uh, is the code for joining our Strava group, uh, www.strava, is it .com slash group slash E-S-A-R-P, I think is the the URL. Uh, we've had a couple of people meet in Alicante that have watched the channel, watched games together, become friends. It's amazing what this community has done and the friendships that have been made between people in the chat box. Um, I love it. It's fantastic. Um, Sandman says, when does daylight savings kick in um, for you guys across the pond? At Sunday, UK daylight savings, I think is Sunday. Yes, Sunday the 31st of March, obviously the game. In the UK, the clocks will go forward one hour at 1 a.m. on the last Sunday in March and back one hour at 2 a.m. on the last Sunday in October. So, I always get this like wrong. So at 1 a.m. on the last Sunday, the clocks spring forward by one hour. So I'm assuming that means this Sunday, right? So if it's 1 a.m. on the Sunday, the clocks will go forward. So on the 31st of March at 1 a.m., it will suddenly become 2 a.m. So I'll be waking up at what I would think to be 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. And actually, it'll be 7 or 8 a.m. In, in real time now. So that means... If indeed I'm doing the show an hour ahead of when I would usually do it, I think that means that for anywhere else in the world, this show will be an hour earlier. I think. I think that's right. So if you listen to the show outside of the UK, on Sunday, the 8am show will be an hour earlier for you if you don't have daylight savings. So it always works out that that is one of the least watched shows of the year because obviously everyone's like, hold on, I missed it because we did the show an hour earlier, I think. I think that's how it works. I'm pretty sure. I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's that's how it works. So just keep an eye on Twitter. Keep an eye on YouTube's feeds. And of course, I'll be tweeting um, all of the information. So, um, yeah, Adam says your show will come on at midnight for me instead of 1 a.m. So there you go. Um, so for Adam, wherever he's based, I mean, that's quite a fair few hours before, seven hours behind. So I'm guessing you're in the States somewhere um, or Canada somewhere, maybe South America. Let us know. Um, then uh, the show, of course, will be that hour earlier for everybody else in the world. And Kevin says, yeah, it's a huge benefit. So for some people on the West Coast in particular, I guess it's it's far, far earlier in the day uh, for you all. And uh, I know people listen in America. This is the last thing they listen to before they go to the bed. And people here, it's the first thing they listen to before they go off to work. Um, so it's quite a nice uh, difference. But I certainly think that the, the summer timings are far better for people. So yeah, just may be aware of that. Sunday, daylight savings an hour earlier. Last thing before I go, um is that of course yesterday evening we did a show 
uh, talking very much about some of the comments we received on yesterday's show, both during and after. If you've not yet watched that, please do. If you're listening on audio platforms and wondering what I'm talking about, it has only gone up on YouTube. The reason why it's only gone up on YouTube is because there's no way, there's no way that I cannot demonetize audio platforms because they're distributed. Um, so while on YouTube I can select not to monetize something, I can't do that on audio platforms, and I wanted to commit that show to a demonetized fashion. I didn't want to make any money off that show, so we demonetized it. So I want to stick to that. So it won't be uploaded on audio platforms. If you want to go back and listen to the phone-in show from last night where we talked about a lot about the comments, the criticisms of the women's game, please go back and watch it on YouTube. Um, it was one of it genuinely was one of the best shows, if I do say so myself, I've ever done. The calls we had were brilliant. The input we had was fantastic. The callers we had were awesome. Um, so please go back and watch that or listen to it. If you have, I think, like a YouTube, is it YouTube subscription? You can actually kind of like lock your phone. Um, and you don't get adverts either as well. So there's also that. But you can lock your phone while listening to YouTube if you have a subscription, I think, to it. But uh, otherwise, thank you uh, for listening. There will be a show tonight um, as well. And someone's asking for the Strava group. This is where I struggle now to, to find it. Uh, Strava group. Uh, the Guna Talk Club. Let me see if I can find it. Clubs on Strava. Strava. That's the word. Um, find a club. Um, yeah, I think you'll have to like search for it. It's as I say, it's eat, sleep, Arsenal, repeat. It's the oh, hold on. If I go onto this YouTube show, maybe I'll put it in the description. Maybe there's a dis maybe there's a link to it, and I can find it. I'm so, I know this isn't great listening. We trying to look for things, but yes, there is a link. Uh, I've got it right here. So it's www.strava.com/clubs/esarp. That is the link to our Strava club if you'd like to join it. I can't say I'm wildly active on it, but I know other people in there are. Um, so, yeah, join it. Join the, the, the club and uh, log all your exercise that you do. Make some friends. Maybe you'll even find some people close to you that you can go on bike rides with or uh, runs with or whatever you want to do. I'll leave a link to that as well in the uh, in the chat box. So there you go. That's uh, how you can find it. That's www.strava.com slash clubs slash E-S-A-R-P uh, for Eat, Sleep, Arsenal, Repeat podcast is what that stands for. So there you go. Um, fantastic stuff. Uh, there will be a show tonight. I'll be joined by Umar Chowdhury and Laura Francis Kirk uh, to talk about, or Laura, Laura Kirk Francis. I always get it the wrong way around. I think I did it on the live show. I need to ask her about that later. Um, but you can join me, Umar, and Laura a little bit later on for a, more chat about uh, the Ben White situation. I think we've after what Declan Rice has said. We'll talk a bit about injuries ahead of the game against Manchester City. Um, so do make sure you uh, you tune in tonight at 5 p.m. UK time. Um, so 5 p.m. UK will be this evening's show. Thank you so much for listening. Do drop a like on the channel. Subscribe if you are new. And I will see you a little bit later on today. Stay safe. Stay happy, stay well, and stay respectful. And as always, up the Arsenal.